Okay, so um, class for today, we'll just do a quick review of you know the important concepts that we did study last time. Uh, so first one will be the um, alleles. So alleles can be identical or they can be different. And alleles can be passed on uh, from the parents to the uh, to the offspring. Uh, when we talk about dominant alleles, so these are the alleles that are most likely will be manifested through the offspring. Like you know, if if the dominant trait is dark brown eyes, then the kids more will most likely have dark brown eyes, or maybe all of them will have dark brown eyes if um, if the dominant allele will be coming from a purebred. Okay, so. And then a recessive allele is um, is an allele that often is not manifested through the offspring. Um, so usually it will be manifested if, let's say, both are hybrids, like both parents are hybrids, and they, they both have those recessive alleles. So I'll give you an example. Um, say, for example, if both parents will have blue eyes, but they both have recessive alleles for green eyes, then there is a 25% chance, if you would go back to the video that I showed you last time, there is a 25% chance of um, their offsprings having um, green eyes. So it can be a surprise for them, right? But And, and then that's it. And then for uh, another important concept will be um, genotype and the phenotype. So when we talk about phenotype, it's the outward appearance. So let's say, for example, what is the phenotype if, let's say, for example, both parents uh, will have dominant alleles for, let's say, dark brown eyes, then the phenotype, which is, which is the outward appearance of the offspring, will be dark brown eyes. Now, uh, if we are talking about genotype, genotype is um, the, the genes or the codes, right? So that's the that's the uppercase B, lowercase B, those things that we did study. And an important tool for you guys to determine the percentage or what the outcome will be or the phenotype of a certain genotype is to use a Punnett square. So please, please review that video that I po uh, that I posted yesterday. Now, for today, this will be the third uh, third video for uh, for topic three. And this is about nurture, nature and nurture. So it's going to be an easy one. So it's a short one. Um, and after this, I'll be uh, uh, posting an instruction or a link on how to play a similar Kahoot game. But in, in this case, you're not just looking at the colors to tap. You are actually looking at the questions. So we'll schedule that at a certain time. So that'll be a review before the quiz for topic two and Topic two and three, that which will be done through D2L also. So, um, and additional details will be, um, you know, given to you guys um, for that test or for that quiz. Okay, so for today we'll be looking at nature and nurture. So, which one, which one is more influential when it comes to, um, you know, the outward appearance or looks or how an organism adjusts right to its environment? So, what effects does environment have on the correct? characteristics we show um, not all, not all characteristics are inherited so I told you before you know height can be affected by diet or skin color can somehow be affected by affected by I mean the exposure to sunlight right um, for example scars injuries clothing hairstyle makeup cosmetic surgery language um, is something that is not uh, inherited so it's something that can be learned right um, athletic ability, those are things that you can learn. Some characteristics are influenced by both genetics and and the environment. So example, weight. So am I, so, well, me, I'm susceptible to gaining weight, right? That's that's just my genes, right? I, I can be taller uh, depending on, on the amount of nutrients I will have, but um, there is a certain limit because my genes would limit it, right? So, um, so those are the things that, you know, um, those factors can interact. So the interaction between a person's genetic, which is nature, and environment nurture nurture are complex and not well understood. And it actually is um, difficult, right? Because there's no, like it's difficult to determine, is this from nature or from nurture? Okay. Um, studying the effects of genetics and the environment. So look at similarities and differences between identical twins. So 
there's this one case wherein um so twins they they were separated at birth and 40 years after uh they met they uh, they you know they met 40 years after and um, surprisingly they both have you know their favorite favorite colors will be the same their body structure will be the same i don't know because maybe they belong to the same to the family with the same um routine and stuff or same economic background that they will have the same like maybe same level of nutrients or whatever uh same preference for hairstyle which is amazing so um, so maybe it can be embedded in the genes or, um, you know, maybe the environment, their environment is very much the same that somehow they grew up that way, right? So have the same genetic information, so they share inherited traits. Um, identical twins separated at birth, so that's a, that's a story that I told you. So what traits are inherited, what traits are influenced by the environment, and what is it that makes us who we really are? So those are the questions. Is it is it the environment that we grew up in, or uh, grew up with, or um, the genes that we that was passed on to to us? So, and still is a question. Okay, action of genes is greatly influenced by the environment. So let's say poor nutrition obviously affects the affects the growth. Um, use of alcohol can affect you know pregnancy and we. We know that you know when 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 mom starts to drink, um, somehow the kids are the babies inside are affected. Uh, we also know that exposure to chemicals, um, like in in India, there's a there's a an, like a province there where the main source of income would be um, producing cottons, uh, but somehow they since they are producing fertilizers without you know coverings without protecting themselves, somehow it did change the. Uh, the DNA and kids were born without you know, quadriplegic, meaning they they don't well they the kids are or babies were born without without arms and legs, so because of the fertilizer the effects of the fertilizer, so um so that can be an environmental factor. Now, uh, thalidomide. So if if the mom is exposed to thalidomide, um, children of mothers who took thalidomide were born with birth defects. Uh, like for this kid here. If I can move this. Okay. Like for this kid here, um, he he's missing an arm or something. Uh, this baby here is missing two arms and a leg and some fingers here too. Children of thalidomide babies often develop um, normally DNA was not affected. So only those that, you know, experience the first hand effect of thalidomide and then these babies when they produce more babies the dna will not be affected and next one is the human genome project okay so human genome human genome project is a 13 year project um it was completed years ago uh this is to identify the genes uh, the human dna now uh the goal is to determine which which part of the genes which part of the dna will let's say make you susceptible to cancer which part of the dna makes you healthy or produce a certain color eye color uh, produce a certain you know type of muscles and, and it, it is important to know right it's 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 more of prevention so let's say if i can know you know what if i can if i can have a record of your dna then i will be able to, to i will be able to tell whether you're susceptible to a certain disease and you can do something about it Right, it's it's really costly. It's five hundred million. Um, only seven human genomes have been fully sequenced. Um, so two Koreans, Chinese, and then maybe, and then, you know, the other scientists who did study that. Okay, can now be done for fifty thousand dollars. So if you wanna, if you wanna know, if you wanna know your genetic makeup, you're susceptible to certain disease or whatever, then you can have it done by paying fifty thousand dollars. Um, another concept would be codominance, meaning they are working together. So when two opposite alleles are paired, they work together. Let's say, for example, red, red and blue. Uh, now it becomes a spotted, like a Dalmatian, right? So just an example. You know, if let's say if you have a black dog and you have a white dog, then you will have a spotted, a spotted dog, right? Like a black and black and white so that's that's called dominant so there's no there's no black only there's no there's no white only or there's no gray 
it's basically both of them trying to dominate and then both of them manifested on that certain um, species. So again, going back to that, may, okay, for the Dalmatian, it is maybe black dog and a white dog. When they were mixed together, they didn't produce a black dog or a white dog or a gray dog. They produced a spotted dog. So, so somehow both of them are trying to be, they're trying to work with each other, but in a way, both of them are dominant, um, dominant phenotype or the outward appearance when you look at um, the offspring. And that ends topic three. God bless.